and we can hear you. So thank you. Um, please take it. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to you and all. Uh, thanks for attending my presentation. My name is Hassan Nuran from Louisiana State University, and today I'm going to present our research on the development of engineer cementitious composite with baguette ash as sand replacement. Before I start my presentation, I would like to acknowledge the others of this paper, including Dr. Arsha and Dr. Marwa Hassan. All right, moving on to the presentation outline. I will start the presentation with an introduction to engineering cementitious composite or ECC as I call it from now on. Then I will talk about my objectives and method we use in our research. Then uh, I will discuss our result. And finally, I will finish my presentation with concluding remarks. So let's just start the presentation with an old saying. If it ain't crack, it ain't concrete. One of the main issues affecting serviceability and quality of the concrete is cracking. Generally, one of the problems with concrete is the brittleness nature of the concrete, which is prone to cracking. Usually the crack width is larger than 100 micrometer, which will facilitate the penetration of the detrimental agent uh, and make the concrete structure more palpable, thus less durable. For example, water can penetrate the base and damage the pavement, as you can see uh, in these pictures. Many efforts have been conducted to improve the ductility and fracture toughness of concrete materials. An approach to enhance ductility in concrete is through fiber reinforcement. The development of fiber reinforced concrete or FRC and high performance fiber reinforced cementitious composite uh, has shown substantial improvement in the fracture toughness of concrete. Challenges exist with this technology, including low tensile strength capacity of FRC and uh, cause workability and mixing of high performance fiber reinforcing and tissues composite. So a specific type of micromechanically designed HPFRCC called ECC has been developed where a low volume fractions of short fiber in the range of one to 2% is generally used. Uh, the strain hardening behavior of ECCs with a strain capacity of one to 8% in tension makes them excellent fiber reinforcing and tissues materials. The strain hardening behavior in ECC is mainly characterized by the formation of multiple cracks. So moving on to the problem statement, uh, aggregate play an important role in the properties uh, and costs of concrete materials. In the case of ECC, aggregate has an additional and important effect on the tensile ductility of the composite. For example, utilizing a small aggregate particle decrease the matrix fracture toughness and prevent poor fiber dispersions in ECC. A very fine manufactured silica sand known as macro silica sand is typically used in the production of ECC materials. In this figure, you can see the differences between the sizes of macro silica sand and ordinary silica sand, uh, which macro silica sand is much smaller. Uh, this micro silica sand is not readily available and is expensive, which increase the production cost of ECC material. So it is important to identify a cost-effective fine aggregate alternatives. Massive amount of sugar, bagasse, ash, or SCBA are produced worldwide. And currently, SCBA has no economic value and is disposed of in landfills, causing environmental concerns. And finding alternative application for this agricultural byproduct is important. Due to its fine particle size, this material could serve as a potential source of finite gear in the production of concrete materials. A few studies have investigated the effect of low replacement levels of uh, finite gear with SCBA in concrete, where the optimum replacement amount was found to be 20% by volume. Also, the effect of finite gear replacement with SCBA has not been truly investigated in the literature in the production of ECC. So the present study evaluate the effect of partial or complete replacement of silica sand with post-process SCBA, referred to as sugarcane bagasse sand or SCBS here and after, on the mechanical properties of ECC materials. Move on to the experimental program, ordinary Portland uh, cement type one, class F fly ash, ordinary fine river sand or SS, sugarcane bagasse sand, with the same maximum particle size of 1.80 millimeters we are using this study. Fiber used throughout this study was REC S15 polyvinyl alcohol fibers, which was non-all coated PVA fibers. 
finally, a high range weather reducer was an admixture in the matrix. So let's talk about the production process of uh, SCBS used in this study and some of its properties. The SCBA used uh, in this study was collected from a sugar mill in Louisiana. Then the material was first dried for about 14 hours at 45 degrees centigrade to remove the moisture. Then a number 16 sieve was utilized to remove the coarse impurities such as gravel and unburned fibers from the SCBA. The sieve SCBA was burned under controlled condition for six hours at 550 degrees centigrade. Due to the presence of uh, amorphous silica, the burn SCBA uh, has the potential to be used as supplementary cementitious materials. Therefore, the burn SCBA was further sieved using a number 200 sieve to separate the fine particle, which can be used as supplementary cementitious materials and coarse particle that can be used as fine ideas. So we use the material retained in number 200 sieve to obtain the uh, SCBS, as you can see the final product uh, in the last figure. SCBS was used in this study in combination with ordered silica sand, SS, to replace microsilica, microsilica sand in the production of uh, ECC. So to gain insight into the morphology of SCBS, SCM analysis was conducted. It is observed that SCBS consists of particles with varied shapes and sizes such as irregular porous particle that correspond to amorphous silica and prismatic and spherical particle, which corresponds to crystalline silica. These two figures uh, illustrate the particle size distribution of SCBS and SS as obtained from sieve analysis. Uh, it is observed that SCBS average particle size is smaller than that of uh, silica sand. Uh, the Fuller curves were one of the most widely used and accepted aggregate distribution, which described the optimum aggregate gradation to produce the highest possible particle packing density. Uh, the best particle uh, density of sand is given by the cumulative particle size distribution that is closest to the Fuller curve, the red line. It was found that the SCBS 75 75% replacement provide the best uh, particle packing among all the sand combination, followed by SCBS 50, 125, and finally 100% silica sand. In this uh, study, the properties of the matrix and interface were tailored through the use of different contents of uh, silica sand and SCBS. What we did was basically five mixed designs that had the same water binder ratio, same sand binder ratio, and same fiber content of 1.75%. The different levels of sand replacement investigated were 0% as a control specimen, 25, 50, 75, and 100% replacement by volume. Here is the sequence of materials addition and mixture speed. So the, as, to assess the hardened properties of ECC, SCMC 39 was, contacted, was conducted to measure the compressive strengths. To characterize the tensile behavior of ECCs, the uniaxial tensile test was performed on dark bone shaped specimen per the recommendation by Japanese Society of Civil Engineering. And finally, after carrying out the uniaxial tensile test, the average residual crack width was measured on the specimen using an optical microscope. So moving on to the result, here are the 28 days compressive strength test results of the ECC mixture. Uh, the compressive strength of ECCs in this study is significantly higher than the compressive, compressive strength of ordinary concrete, which is around 30 megapascal. 75% sand replacement with SCBS has the highest compressive strength, which is 54 megapascal. The increase in compressive strength of a specimen with SCBS can be attributed to a combination of pozzolanic activity and filler effect of SCBS. Also, as it was discussed earlier, all specimens containing SCBS uh, exhibited better particle packing than a specimen containing only silica sand and may explain why the M75 mixture, which has the best particle packing, showed the highest compressive strength. 
This figure presents the uniaxial tensile stress strain curves for all the ECC materials evaluated in this study at 28 days of curing. These curves indicate that all ECC mixture displayed the desired pseudo strain hardening behavior. Here is the summary of the result for the uniaxial tensile test. The figure on the left side provides the average uniaxial first cracking and the tensile strains, whereas the other figure uh, reports the average strain capacity for all ECCs. It is observed that the use of SCBS led to an increase in the tensile strain capacity in comparison to the control ECC at all uh, replacement level. To successfully design ECC, we need to meet two criteria, strain criteria, energy criteria. It is also well known that the large aggregate particle lead to an increase in fracture toughness, toughness. And as discussed earlier, the SCBS particles are much finer than those of the SS utilized in this study. Therefore, the use of SCBS can reduce the fracture toughness, thus leading uh, to an increase in the energy index, uh, which explains the enhanced ductility. Also, as you can see, uh, uh, there are some percentage in the left figure, and the percentage is the relative increases of the tensile strength when compared to the first cracking strength, which provide information regarding the strength index. It is observed that the that replacing silica sand with SCBS increases the uh, strength index, which could also have a factor in increasing the tensile ductility of SCBS ECC materials. The figure below presents the average residual crack widths of ECC. The results show that the crack widths for all ECC specimens were tight and less than 51.7 uh, micrometer width. Uh, high SCBS contents, for example, 75 and 100, show a small reduction in crack widths when compared to the control ECC. The tight crack widths of SB, uh, SCBS ECC suggest that they can be ideal materials uh, for highly durable concrete infrastructure. Here is a summary of the major physical properties and preliminary cost analysis of ECC in this study and a, a benchmark ECC mixture named ECC M. 45 that was developed by Professor Victor Lianko Worker. As you can see, the mechanical properties of the developed ECC materials in this study are almost similar to that of M45. While the properties are the same, the cost of all SCBS ECC mixture considered in this study is significantly lower than that of uh, ECC M45. Uh, for example, a comparison between M45 and M75 ECC shows that the mechanical properties of 75% sand replacement with SCBC are almost the same as M45. However, M75 mixture corresponds to a 53% reduction in the initial material cost per cubic meter when compared to the cost of M45. So this cost reduction is mainly driven by the usage of SCBS and ordinary silica sand. Uh, contrary to macro silica sand, the utilization of non-oil coated PVA fiber and the reduction in the content of PVA fiber. It is concluded that uh, in terms of initial material costs, all ECC mixtures considered in this study are more cost effective and practical to, imp uh, to implement in civil infrastructure than ECC M45. Uh, finally, the conclusion, uh, with the exception of M25, all S uh, CBS ECC mixture showed higher compressive strength than the control ECC. An increase in the tensile strength capacity was observed for all SCBS ECC mixture when compared to the control ECC material. The addition of SCBS has only minor effects on the tensile strength of ECC mixture in contrast to the effects observed for tensile ductility. The average crack widths of ECC materials did not exceed 51.7 micrometer. Uh, overall, M75 from this study showed the properties comparable to benchmark ECC by Lee and co-worker at a significantly reduced cost. The result presented in this study suggests that the implementation of SCBA as sand replacement in ECC material is very is promising. Future research should be directed to, to evaluate the full potential of SCBS in the production of ECC materials. I would like to acknowledge transportation concerns Sound Central Estate Transit and Louisiana Transportation Research Center for their support. 
uh, with that, I end my presentation. I will be happy to answer any questions, if any. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that presentation. Very interesting. Do we have uh, any questions? All right. I'm not hearing any questions, but I, I know with this presentation, um, we have been led right into our next presentation. If you took note of the last uh, bullet on the conclusions for future research, I believe that was a preview of our next presentation, which is going to be on the evaluation of um, the sand replacement um, for ECC. So uh, we will make uh, the transition to our next uh, presentation. And so um, Sujata, uh, yes. You should be, let's see. Okay, let um, me start sharing my 